Now, moving right along, uh, a couple of uh, a couple of items uh, of a public service nature that I, I would like to get out of the way. Besides, you know, contributing to, to Zero's fund, um, I, I repeatedly get emails asking about, you know, uh, how 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 can they see the show live? They missed the show live. This that you know. I, I know I say this every week, but you know, if if you have Twitter. Please follow Smart Scarecrow on Twitter. I do announce on show days, you know, I usually give you at least two or three announcements during the course of the day saying, hey, there's going to be a show tonight, and I give you the link to where to go. Uh, bottom line is I, I do two shows a week, and if you want to catch them live, it's uh, Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. I do the commercial broadcast as part of the Wide Awake News presentation on Mondays. And then on Thursday evenings, I do this audio video presentation, which is broadcast um, uh, on Justin TV. Uh, all my broadcasts are recorded and are published uh, for on-demand viewing uh, on YouTube. So if uh, you know if you want to catch the show live, it's Monday at eight o'clock Eastern, Thursday at nine o'clock Eastern. If you just can't catch it live because you're in some time zone way off in the distance, hey, don't sweat it. It'll be up on YouTube usually before the next day. Oh, let me think. Anything else I got to do before I bring uh, our feature presenter in for the evening? Let me think. Was there anything else I was supposed to? Ah, uh, yes. I suspect there's probably a couple items in the news that we might want to discuss tonight. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to what passes for the news on the Smart Scarecrow Show. Now, remember back after 9-11, we had this funny-looking little turd from Texas who was the imposter-in-chief started talking about them their weapons of mass destruction weapons of mass destruction now when you hear somebody say weapons of mass destruction what image comes to mind i mean do you think about you know a nine millimeter automatic with a high capacity magazine I mean, would you consider that a weapon of mass destruction? Do you think about, you know, uh, an AR-15 with a 30-round magazine? I mean, would you consider that a weapon of mass destruction? Or when you think of a weapon of mass destruction, do you think in terms of, you know, a thermonuclear bomb or chemical weapons or bioweapon? I mean, when somebody says weapon of mass destruction, what image does that put in your head? Well, I mean, something big, right? I mean, in one instant, can take out a whole lot of people. Maybe a blockbuster or a city buster, you know, so, uh, you know something really scary, right? I mean, because that that's what was waved at us after 9-11. That's Dom. you got weapons of mass destruction. Well, weapon of mass destruction. If you talk to somebody in the military, they know what a weapon of mass destruction is. You know, a weapon of mass destruction is just like I say, you know, this is something that in one moment can take out a whole lot of people. Maybe take out, you know, a block, thousands of people. Maybe take out a whole city. You know, they, they think in terms of 
radiological or, or, or nuclear or, or some sort of chemical weapon or some sort of bio weapon, you know, something of that nature. That, to a military man, is a weapon of mass destruction. Well, people in government and people in media play games with words. For a long time, you've had this weapons of mass destruction shaking at you as, oh, that's something really scary. You know, boy, if he's got a weapon of mass destruction, he's got to be a terrorist. He's got to be a bad guy, right? Well, suppose I told you that the FBI and our Congress now classifies a shoulder-launched rocket. Rocket-propelled grenade type thing. Something like a Laws rocket. Something of that nature. Suppose I told you now that the FBI and our Congress are classifying a shoulder-launched rocket-propelled grenade as a weapon of mass destruction. Yeah. 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 Now, I will grant you that, you know, a rocket-propelled grenade, uh, it's a pretty nasty weapon. I mean, you know, I mean, that thing might even take out, you know, one of those fancy new armored personnel carriers that the police are starting to ride around in. Hmm. So, yeah, if you happen to get caught with one of those toys, you're now liable to be charged with possession of weapons of mass destruction. Now, you know what happened to old Saddam for, for his possession of weapons of mass destruction, don't you? See, that could be you. Well, now, it turns out that, you know, there's a guy named uh, uh, Harron, H-A-R-R-O-U-N is how he spells his name, who happened to post to his uh, Facebook page uh, a little video of him firing a rocket-propelled grenade. Now, I personally have no idea what the context was. For all I know, he was on one of these preserves, you know, where these militia guys get out with their machine guns, and, you know, some of these guys have some pretty neat toys. You know, some of them have tanks. Uh, you know, I like I say, I have no idea what the context was, and it wasn't in any of the articles I read on the idea. And, you know, I got to thinking about it, and I said, you know, gee... If I had an opportunity to go out to a preserve somewhere and shoot a rocket propelled grenade, I'd probably want to, you know, I mean, if, if I could do it for, you know, a reasonable price, maybe a hundred bucks to, to fire one of those things, that'd be cool. I, you know, sign me up. I'll buy a ticket. You know, it's better to ride at a carnival, you know. Well, apparently, that's the kind of deal that this guy was involved in. Okay. Well, he posts a video on, on, on his Facebook page to brag to all his friends about, I got to shoot a rocket propelled grenade. Cool beans, you know. This guy is facing jail time right now. Yeah, he's been snagged by the FBI, and he could be facing anywhere from two years to life for possession and use of weapons of mass destruction. Note to self, be very careful what you post on your, on your Facebook page. I mean, chances are this guy was involved in some harmless fun. Chances are he fired the shoulder-launched rocket-propelled grenade at an old derelict car on a 100-acre farm out in the middle of nowhere where it was perfectly safe. Nobody was hurt. No, uh, you know, it was just, you know, a fun thing to do. Something that you would normally think would give you bragging rights. And for that, this guy may wind up in a 6x9 with Bubba. You know, in, in recent years, it's become more and more obvious to many people, I would hope, that our government and our banking establishment, 
those people who claim to represent us and fill the positions of what is supposed to be our government, the government that we elect, the government that we pay, the government that we expect to do things on our behalf. But more and more, it's become obvious that what poses as our government is really the government of a small minority within the United States that represents maybe one or two percent of the population and these people happen to run the banking industry. Think about it. How many secretaries of the Treasury have come out of J.P. Morgan and or Goldman Sachs? Think about it. Do your own damn research. Don't believe me. How many high government officials or in some way tied up with the financial industry up on Wall Street. Think about it. What well, so happens that our most recent export to Canada, the fellow who was the ambassador to Canada, was a Goldman Sachs guy. And Canadians didn't like him much because, you know, he's up there, you know, wheeling and dealing basically on behalf of our financial industry here in the United States, you know. The guys who own our money. Well, when this guy got pulled out and was scheduled to be replaced, Canadians were kind of hopeful, you know, gee, maybe we'll actually get somebody in here who's willing to negotiate with us in good faith because, you know, Canada's got a lot of oil. They've got a lot of energy resources, and the United States needs oil and energy resources. And, you know, we'd really like to have somebody up here who, who will bargain with us in good faith, maybe, maybe work a deal that everybody's happy with. Well, what does uh, Obama decide to send to Canada as our next ambassador? A fellow by the name of Bruce Heyman. Bruce Heyman. From the Chicago branch of Goldman Sachs. Now, why should this matter to you? Why does this make any damn difference to you, right? I mean, you're more concerned with, you know, am I still going to have a job next week? Am I going to be able to pay my electric bill? Am I going to be able to buy groceries? Believe me, I know. I understand. The problem is, these are the guys who are out there in the world representing you. Whether you like it or not, this is what the world sees as your representative. In other financial news, everything in government is really financial news. In other financial news, the trustee for the now defunct U.S. brokerage firm MF Global. Remember MF? Remember being MF'd? A lot of people were MF'd. Uh, the trustee for the now defunct U.S. brokerage firm MF Global, former FBI Director Louis Free, issued a 124 page investigatory report blasting former MF Global CEO and Obama bundler. Bundler, that means he's a campaign contribution vacuum cleaner. He knows a lot of people with dough and he runs around grab, picking their pockets for, for a political campaign. John Corzine, John Corzine, for negligent conduct, employing trading strategies with lax oversight and surpassing board-approved limits for European trades. Now, John Corzine, you know, if Johnny Boy did wrong, you know, he's been punished enough. He got himself a nice slap on a hand. Everything is a fine. Oh, you say, what about poor Barry uh, uh, Madoff? You remember a guy named Madoff? Madoff actually went to jail. Okay? 
So far, he's the only high-profile financial personality here in the United States who's uh, you know sharing that six by nine with Bubba. Well, you know, Bernie's come out and said all along, "Hey, you know, J.P. Morgan must have known what I was doing. Uh, they participated, and they were complicit." But see, the difference is, Corzine, the reason he's not in jail, he stole a little money from DeGoyam. Okay? Bernie, Bernie Madoff, he got deep into the pockets of some of the tribe out in Hollywood. Okay? That's why Bernie is sharing a 6 by 9 with Bubba. He took money from the wrong people. Do we understand each other? Government and money. Government and money. They're in bed together. You don't get nothing done in government unless the money changes hands. All right. Moving right along to global events. Can you hear the sabers rattling in the east? Huh? Do you hear uh, the noise coming out of Korea? Now, a long time ago, you'll have to go back through the archives and search for it. I don't even remember what episode it is. A long time ago, I said, you know, all this, you know, uh, distraction with Iran and Syria and Libya. And, you know, I mean, yes, you know, there were terrible events, but really it was just the prelude, just the buildup, just the practicing for World War III. Now, We have been raped and brutalized by the financial industry here in the United States. I mean, let's get right down to brass tacks. These boys have stolen with both hands. And a lot of people are starting to wake up. Holy crap! Who is it took my wallet while I was snoozing? Now, they got blatant. They're in Cyprus, you know, where they just... You know, reached into everybody's savings account and grabbed a big chunk and said, <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Well, you don't realize it, but they've been doing it to you all along. It's just they've been, they've been doing a little bit at a time with this thing here called inflation. And there's here bubbles, you know, the housing bubble. You know, they suckered a whole lot of people to buy half a million dollar homes that now are worth about a quarter million. You know what I mean? Okay, so they've been doing it to you all along, but they've do, been doing it in kind of backhanded ways to where, you know, a lot of people really didn't, huh? You know, they hit him so fast and so hard in the back of the head with a two by four, they didn't know what hit him. Okay, folks in Cyprus, they got to watch the thief walk in, reach into their bank account, and grab the money. So, you want to know who's mad? Folks in Cyprus. But, you know, we're still kind of, you know, dazed and confused. We can't figure out where the hell it came from. All we know is that one minute we had our money, and the next minute it's gone. So, a lot of people. Waking up and starting to smell the coffee. And they kind of see what's going on. They're starting to get a little pissed off. Okay? Well, what happens? What happens when an economy is in the toilet and it's circling? And all of a sudden everybody realizes that they're on this boat, you know, circling the drain. What do you think happens? Well, first thing they do is they grab the captain by the neck and they throw him in first because that son of a bitch didn't keep him off the out of the out of the out of the trouble. You know he deserves to go down first. Oh, well the bankers don't want that to happen to him. You know there's too darn many lamp poles and rope is cheap. So what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I got an idea. I know what to do. Yeah, yeah, I know what'll distract them. Yeah, yeah, let's get those monkey people fighting each other, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're just goyim anyway, you know. Let's throw them into the nuclear fire. Let's see if we can stir the pot and get them distracted so they won't be coming after us. Wouldn't that be a great idea? So, yeah, yeah, you're going to be hearing a lot of stuff about how evil... North Korea is. Ooh, man, there's some bad, scary dudes. Unlike Saddam Hussein and unlike Iran, North Korea actually does have 
a weapon of mass destruction. Matter of fact, they might even have three or four of them. And they even have a rather clumsy launch vehicle, a uh, very primitive device, not much more sophisticated than the Scud missiles that Saddam had. But, but this thing is capable of launch, launching a, uh, a payload uh, into orbit. If you can get a payload into orbit, uh, there's pretty high probability you could actually drop it on a target, maybe even somewhere close to where you'd like it to be. So, you know, ooh, North Korea. Oh, they really got they really got weapons of mass destruction. And their weapons of mass destruction won't just take out, you know, an armored car. Their weapons of mass destruction might actually be a city buster. Uh, ooh, scary, scary. Oh, we got to do something about those guys. But, you know, even worse than the fact that North Korea has weapons of mass destruction, they have rejected the idea of a Rothschild central banking system. Ooh, they are terrorists. They really are bad guys. Man, we need to go kick their ass bad, don't we? And gee, you know, if we get all the monkey people wild and crazy for, you know, a nuclear holocaust, hmm, let's see, we can reduce the surplus population. Um... They'll certainly be distracted and not remember the fact that we've, you know, raped and pillaged them for the last, mm, I don't know, 100 years or so. Uh, this is a great idea. This is a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. World War III. <laughs> the current generation's too damn young to remember the last World War. They have no idea how nasty, how ugly, and what a bad idea a world war would really be. But yeah. Yeah. All it would take would be a suitcase nuke or a small deployment of some sort of biological weapon that they could conveniently blame on our friends in North Korea and you could very quickly have an escalation into an all-out nuclear war. They did it on 9-11. They got us all excited. Got us to go kick the ass of some folks that in reality never really did us any harm. They may not have been the nicest people in the world but they had nothing to do with 9-11. And we went and kicked ass in Afghanistan. Since then, a million people, roughly, have died from the opium that our boys are helping guard. So yeah, World War III. For the bankers, might be a great idea. Great distraction. How about you? What's in it for you? And you betcha. That's bullshit. And that was Scarecrow's News Rant for April 4th, 2013. Hope it got you thinking about those issues, particularly that last one. Now, I know there's a couple in the chat room who are not real fond of Mike Rivero. Uh, frankly, you know, I, I agree with him on some items and I disagree with him on others. But one thing he has been saying recently that uh, makes a lot of sense to me. The World War III is a really, really bad idea.